Bodh Gaya, northern India, a focus for Buddhists all over the world. Two thousand five hundred years ago, on this very spot, Buddhists believe that a man called Siddhartha Gautama sat down to meditate and experienced an extraordinary, shattering insight. He became a Buddha, meaning one who is awake to the truth. Despite his privileged upbringing. As a prince who was set to inherit his father's kingdom, Siddhartha had been dissatisfied and driven by a desire for a deeper meaning in life. He now dedicated the rest of his life to teaching people how they could realize the truth about existence as he had done. Today, all over the world, millions of people are looking to Buddhism and practices such as meditation. With its message of peace, Buddhism is attuned to our needs in the frenetic modern world. It offers an inner path of self-awareness and development. Its clear insights into the nature of reality are as relevant now as they were 2,500 years ago. Buddhism is a spiritual path for today. Buddhism has come to the West in many forms, such as Tibetan Buddhism and Zen. The Friends of the Western Buddhist Order, or the FWBO is a Buddhist movement that has grown up alongside these traditions in the West and is dedicated to bringing the Buddha's wisdom alive in the modern world. Since its foundation in 1967, the FWBO has grown into a diverse, vibrant community of devoted Buddhists with activities in 24 countries. The FWBO developed through exploring the principles that support the practice of Buddhism in the modern world. We'll be looking at the FWBO approach to Buddhism and seeing how Buddhism can make a difference to our lives right here, right now. The FWBO was founded by Sangharakshita in 1967. Born Dennis Lingwood in London in 1925, he developed an interest in Buddhism as a teenager. On being demobilized from military service in India at the end of the Second World War, he set off to explore Buddhism further. Eventually, he was ordained as a Buddhist monk and settled in Kalimpong, a town in northeast India on the borders with Tibet. Whilst in Kalimpong, he mixed and studied with many different Buddhist teachers, including leading Tibetan lamas. He always wanted to follow a non-sectarian path, believing in the underlying unity of all schools of Buddhism. Through his writing, he became well known in the Buddhist world and also helped to revive Buddhism in India particularly assisting in the conversion to Buddhism of millions of people who were considered untouchables under the Hindu caste system. These new Buddhists suffered from appalling prejudice under this caste system, 
and Buddhism offered them a new path of dignity and hope. Whilst teaching among them, he became aware that Buddhism must address itself not just to the individual, but to society at large. Sangharakshita returned to England in the mid-1960s and found there a burgeoning interest in Buddhism. He decided to dedicate his learning and experience to meeting this interest. In 1967, he founded the Friends of the Western Buddhist Order. And in 1968, he founded the Western Buddhist Order itself. A new spiritual fellowship of people committed to following the Buddhist path under Sangharakshita's guidance. In bringing Buddhism to the West, Sangharakshita wanted to get back to the very basis of what it means to be a Buddhist. His answer is that a Buddhist is one who is committed to following the Buddhist path and living according to its ideals. It's not a label or a role, but something to which one can bring the whole of oneself and live out thoroughly in every aspect of one's life. Buddhists speak of this commitment as going for refuge or committing oneself to the Three Jewels. The Three Jewels are the Buddha, the ideal of enlightenment, the Dharma, the path and the teaching of the Buddha, and the Sangha, the spiritual fellowship of those who tread the path. Going for refuge can be seen as the urge to become wiser and kinder, more peaceful, and compassionate. And then just take a few deeper breaths and just to, you know, just relax more inside yourself. One practice fundamental to the FWBO, going right back to the time of the Buddha, is meditation. Meditation not only helps us to slow down and cultivate a fuller awareness of ourselves, but also allows us to transform and gain wisdom, just as the Buddha did. We can also deepen our meditation practice by going on retreat. Be it a weekend or a week or longer, a retreat is a refreshing opportunity to meditate more often, supported by others, and to relax in peaceful surroundings. Studying the Dharma, the Buddha's path or teaching, also helps us to transform ourselves. In the FWBO, people study the Buddha's core teachings as well as teachings from all Asian traditions, including Tibetan, Japanese and Chinese. But Buddhism isn't something just to be understood intellectually, it's something to be expressed emotionally. So in the FWBO, there is chanting, puja, and ritual on festival days. wanted the FWBO to inherit the values of the entire Buddhist tradition, rather than those of one particular school. At the same time, he wanted the approach of the FWBO to be distinct and relevant for those wishing to practice Buddhism in the modern world. In the FWBO, people consider themselves as simply Buddhists.
All over the world, even in traditionally Buddhist countries in Asia, people are adjusting to the rapid pace of modernization and globalization and asking how to apply traditional Buddhist wisdom to their new environment. We live in a very different world from the Buddhas. For most people, the thought of taking to the road as a homeless wanderer is a bit of a fantasy. But whatever their lifestyle, monastic or family person, worker or meditator, everyone can take the next step in devoting themselves to these values. The FWBO does not distinguish between lay and monastic lifestyles as representative of one's commitment. So one can commit oneself at whatever level is appropriate to one's circumstances. In the FWBO, there are various levels of commitment. One of these is becoming a Mitra, which means friend. Becoming a Mitra involves a simple ceremony where a person publicly affirms their commitment to practicing Buddhism within the FWBO. Those who wish to make a much deeper commitment can ask to be ordained into the Western Buddhist order. Again, this does not require a particular lifestyle, such as becoming a monk or nun. It primarily means making a commitment to the Three Jewels and following the Ten Ethical Precepts. Ordination is a symbolic statement of one's desire for an intensified spiritual life and to move towards enlightenment. Usually, preparation for making such a commitment takes some years of meditating, going on retreats, learning more about the Dharma and the principles and practices of the FWBO. At ordination, one receives a new name expressing one's spiritual qualities and a kesa, a symbol of ordination to be worn on public occasions. This is emblazoned with the symbol of the Three Jewels. The Order is a worldwide network of friendships. Order members are committed to attending weekly meetings with other local Order members and various other Order gatherings. Every two years, the Order meets for an international convention. The FWBO is open to anyone, regardless of age, race, colour, nationality, class, education, gender or sexual orientation. Buddhism says that every single being has the potential to gain enlightenment. Over time, the FWBO has reached more and more people. School children in inner city Manchester, families struggling in the slums of India, Buddhists living a more retreat-like lifestyle in the Spanish mountains, Communities emerging from ex-communist countries like Poland and Estonia. The FWBO is unusual in the Buddhist tradition in ordaining men and women equally. Both sexes have the same responsibilities and duties. Women are ordained by women. Men are ordained by men. Because ordination is based on commitment rather than lifestyle, all kinds of people can go for refuge and enter the order. As long as all have not attained to peace. Oh.
What do you want? Whatever situation we find ourselves in, we can use the opportunity to practice Buddhism. Prasadu is an order member who lives in Yorkshire, in the UK, and has been ordained for 10 years. He sees his Buddhist practice very much in the context of his family life. In my case, I chose that I wanted a family, and the family, I'm sure, benefits from my spiritual practice. And I certainly benefit in developing certain qualities by having the children and helping to bring them up in the world. There are many different lifestyles possible to lead, and there are many different lifestyles that are conducive to the spiritual life. What we say is that commitment to the spiritual life is primary, that's the most fundamental thing. And lifestyle is secondary to that. So it's possible to live in a monastic-like situation, possible to live with a family, possible to live in a community, possible to live on one's own. It's the commitment that's much more important than the lifestyle. All right, come on. You do all Have you done enough reading? Shall we do the words now? Most of us will have spent most of our lives in work. In the FWPO, we value teamwork as a means of spiritual development. Windhorse Evolution is a wholesale retail company that sells gifts from around the world. Here, at its warehouse in Cambridge, it employs on average 90 Buddhists and has an annual turnover of about £9 million. Windhorse Evolution is known as a team-based right livelihood business and people who work here do so because they see their work as an important part of their spiritual practice. They also enjoy working with like-minded people in an atmosphere sympathetic to their spiritual needs. This space doesn't differ massively from an ordinary warehouse and offices, but I think it differs in the sense that it's definitely been designed around our particular needs, uh, particularly the need for space for ritual and team meetings and to include a friendly working environment whereby people can can be in good communication with each other. The more aesthetic you can create and make your environment, the more your mindfulness can expand into it because in a sense it's some, I think beauty encourages mindfulness. So I think if you just treat the space that you have as sympathetically and as beautifully as possible then that will bring out sort of spiritual qualities if you like of mindfulness. May the merit gained in my acting thus in theory, at least, we would try and treat the place as though it were an urban monastery um, and you know, attempt to be mindful and friendly and positive at all times. Windhorse employees do not work for wages or salaries, but rather on the basis of give what you can, take what you need. This means they are financially supported according to their needs. As far as possible, they try and live a simple life using as little of the Earth's resources as they can. The object of the work at Windhorse is to work as mindfully as possible in a spirit of harmony and cooperation with others. That's right, yeah. An attitude of friendship is greatly encouraged as a diverse workforce from around the world comes together. Windhorse also encourages individuals to grow and take on responsibility according to their personal capacities. If they feel under pressure, or in need of support, there is a positive context in which to discuss issues. The environment of trust and support also helps people to develop spiritually. Many FWBO Right Livelihood businesses have been set up to make money to support meditation and Dharma teaching around the world. Therefore, they aim to make a profit through trading ethically. Windhorse Evolution and other team-based Right Livelihood businesses are part of the FWBO's experimentation in ways of applying Buddhism in everyday life. There have been some successes, some failures. But overall, much has been learned about how to make connections between spiritual practice and the world we live in.
Another way we can make connections between Buddhism and the world we live in is through the arts. Sangharakshita has taught that a sense of beauty is an implicit part of the Buddha's teaching. And it's important for those who live outside traditional Buddhist countries to find this beauty within their own culture. Along with meditation, the arts can lead us to more positive and expansive states of mind and a sense of wonder about the nature of existence itself. The arts, whether painting or poetry, storytelling or music, can all help us make emotional connections with our own culture. Is it so? Is it so? Is it so? In 2002, Maitreya Bandhu and Amla Mati produced The Triumph of Life, a Buddhist opera based on the last days of the Buddha. I wanted to create a real sense of community around a single imaginative project that was worth doing, irrespective of whether you were a Buddhist or not. While I was writing this, the events of September the 11th happened in New York. The world is in so much need of beauty, of, uh, of meaning, of, 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 of some sort of of something sort of really creative, trying to, um, rather than destroy and negate, to nurture and well, create beauty, to find some expression, some, to, to look for some sort of truth. It was exciting at times, just love just walking on the stage, you're thinking, good heavens, here we are, because it would just start as an idea. And then suddenly, there you are at a theatre and people come in. It's really rather miraculous. In my conception of beauty, it also includes truth and goodness. And I believe that the Dharma is that. I think if you understand the Dharma, if you touch the Dharma at any point of itself, at any moment, that moment is both beautiful, meaningful and good. The FWBO is dedicated to creating a culture where people can form rich, meaningful and affectionate friendships. The Buddha spoke of Kalyanamitrata, which means friendship based on a common commitment to the ideals represented by the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. Friendship based on a shared belief that human beings can change for the better. Friendship is a human need, and in the FWBO, the spirit of friendship underpins all activities. One example of people sharing their lives through friendship is Buddhafield. Buddhafield started off as an experiment for those who wanted to live and teach the Dharma outdoors in the natural world. It now has a small permanent site, runs a varied program of retreats and tours festivals of alternative culture in the UK. The Buddhafield Festival attracts over 1,900 participants annually. Buddhafield is a great way to reach a variety of people, particularly those who would not come to a Buddhist center in the city. It attracts a lot of young people. The Buddhafield team consists of those who teach meditation and those who work in the cafe. The Buddhafield Cafe team meets to meditate before starting work. During festivals, the cafe opens at 9 for breakfast and closes at midnight. It's a lot of work for the committed team, who work in three shifts around the day. Before work, they have a check-in to see how everyone is and whether they need to be aware of each other in any particular way. Friendly cooperation is an essential part of working together. The team also encourages volunteers, who may choose to work one shift or a whole summer. It all depends on what they can give, but whatever it is, their efforts are much appreciated. 
generosity, or dana, is an important practice for the Buddhafield Cafe team, as they try and stay caring and attentive to their customers and each other, whilst working very hard. The customers benefit greatly from the good food and kindness in the cafe, as do the cafe team, who view work as an opportunity to change themselves. Another way that people get to know each other and build friendship is by living together in a residential community. In the FWBO, communities are places where people live and practice together, confident that their companions share their sense of purpose. They meditate together, eat together, share the burdens of the day, and try and live in a spirit of cooperation. They usually consist only of women or of men, because community members have found that they can develop a more rounded sense of self through spending some time away from the opposite sex. Through the practice of sharing, communities help people live more simply and waste less of the world's resources. They're also great fun. Not everyone is able to live in a community, but everyone can be a friend. In this program, we've been introduced to the FWBO. We've seen what it means to be a Buddhist in this modern tradition, and that commitment to the Buddhist path can be lived out in a variety of ways. Through our practice, we can bring about a total transformation of our being, bringing us into a richer and more dynamic relationship with ourselves and the world around us. We can realize our fullest potential as human beings, becoming wise and compassionate, as the Buddha did, for the benefit of all.